Daylight saving time is typically no fun for any of us. It ends, by the way, on November 4th. We all fight through that. I can't get out of bed feeling, right? It lasts for several days. It's a battle for adults, so it's especially hard for our kids if they don't understand it all. Well, behavioral therapist Dr. Marcy Beagle is the author of My Kids Don't Listen. She's here to help us go from hectic to Harmony. Hello, how you doing? I'm fantastic. Like how are you one. guys? Great, we're glad you're here today. Okay, before we get into the daylight saving tips, I just uh -huh. want to ask you a question, given the title of your book, do, what <laughs> advice in general do you have for parents whose kids just don't listen? I think every parent can relate to that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Popular, popular, popular question, mm -hmm. hence why I wrote the book, My Kids Don't Listen, which is available at MyKidsDon'tListen.com for free today. Oh, great. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's a list of do's and don'ts. So do not beg your kids. Do tell them what's going to happen and follow through. So instead of begging them to eat dinner, come on, please eat your peas and your vegetables. And if you finish, you get dessert. Do tell them what's going to happen. If you eat your dinner, you get dessert and then have a lovely meal. If they eat, they get dessert. If not, they don't. Then they don't. Okay, that makes sense. All, All right. right, we'll try. I, be, I do some begging. I do some begging. Yeah. yeah. So let's get back to daylight saving time. Okay. Uh huh. So what is the biggest challenge that parents face with daylight saving time? What is that? They're fighting biology. The truth of the matter is, it's it's a real struggle. So it's really important to focus on our kids, getting them through that long distance thinking of what's happening tomorrow and the next day, which is why I created the time formula. Okay, so it's talking to, what is the time formula then? T so, is t talking to them about it. Right? Talking to them about the change. Okay. Not a big scientific conversation. Right. A simple, hey, it's light out tonight when we're having dinner. Tomorrow, because of the time change, it'll be dark. I is insist on consistency. Mm -hmm. You both having kids know the routine and schedules are so important. And during transitions, they sometimes fall apart. Mm -hmm. So this is the moment to really hold tight to them. Go to bed at the same time, nap at the same time, wake up at the same time. Okay. M is make room for downtime. Cutting out a few activities for a couple days will go a long way in avoiding problem behavior. Mm -hmm. And then E is extinguish your complaining. I, in all of my workshops, I always teach mm. that small ears are always listening. Mm -hmm. So you make a passing comment of, ah, oh, bedtime's gonna be a nightmare mm -hmm. because of the time change. All of a sudden your kid's behavior falls apart. Mm -hmm. So keep those thoughts to yourself. Okay, that's okay. good to remember. Keep that to yourself. Don't complain yes. because they're listening. They are they always. Are listening. Yeah. Well, how far in advance should we prepare for this time change? Mm -hmm. Our kids don't have the same relationship to time. So if you go too far in advance, they'll forget. They'll get confused and ask you a million times just the day before. Is that just because of the biological component of it? Is that why you're talking about that, that they don't have the concept of the time? No, that's just how they are. You ever have your kid ask you, when's my birthday and when's my birthday? Yes. Same thing. You, just the day before is enough for them to stay on track with you. And the schedules we know are so important when it comes to um, getting the best out of your, out of your kids, right? They Absolutely. With the schedule. They actually need it when they're yeah, kids. Yeah. The schedule, yeah. the routine, you meaning what you say goes so far. Other tips for getting kids to listen? So my other favorite one mm -hmm. is do not multitask. Do one thing at a time. So instead of running around getting your kids dressed and brushing your teeth and getting breakfast ready. Get your kids dressed, brush your teeth, mm -hmm. get breakfast ready. It will save you time and frustration. Mm -hmm. Why does that help the parent? That way, if the kid is not listening to you, if you're screaming from the other room, get dressed <laughs> while you're getting your stuff. Yes. That way you can just focus on them. They will do the thing, Absolutely. hopefully, that you're telling them to do. Yes. Okay. And in my workshops, what I teach is we can't really multitask. So if you want to follow through and get your kid to actually listen, you have to follow through with that. So when you say get dressed 50 times and they don't do it, the way to get them to listen is say it once and follow through. Mm -hmm. What have been some of the testimonials from people in your workshop who've taken your workshop and said, hey, this stuff really works. What's some of the testimonials? So parents walk away and have action-based tools to apply the next day. So I get emails within 24 hours saying, oh my gosh, that worked. I can't believe my kid actually went to bed on time. They didn't ask for five more minutes 50,000 times. And it's those concrete details that I love. That's great. That's great. Dr. Yes. Marcy, again, you can go to mykidsdontlisten.com and get a free copy. A free book. copy! My, my kids don't listen. And it's such a quick, easy read. Oh, I made it that way on purpose. Listen. My husband doesn't <laughs> listen. My dog doesn't listen. No one's listening to me. And Dr. behavior Marcy, is all the same. Thank, thank you, you so much. much.